Regina Gill. I'm the founder and executive director of the Gold Coast Art Center and the Gold Coast International Film Festival. We are here on Long Island and in the community of Great Neck to celebrate, support, and promote the arts in all its wonderful permutations. Art, music, dance, theater, and film have a home here because we're here and we're here to show off everything you can imagine for all ages, from very small children to very senior adults. We have a wonderful gallery. We have a great school for the arts. We show independent films before their release, often their New York, Long Island, even national uh, premieres. And we accompany it always with a conversation with someone connected to the film. We're all about education, education in all the arts. And uh, we have a wonderful time of the year when we show the Festival of the Arts. Our Festival of the Arts showcase cases our kids, our students. They're not all children, but they're all wonderful. And in our gallery, you will find, in addition to the rest of the year when you see professional artists work on a rotating basis hanging in our gallery, for three weeks every year, you have the opportunity to see our up and coming art stars. The children whose work, and I shouldn't say children, also adults, whose work is on our walls and are impressive in every way. I defy you to tell me who the adults are and who the children are when you see some of this work. We have music, we have concerts, we have comedy shows, we have a lot. Please come and visit us. Our exhibits on the walls are open every day of the year, free to the public. Our, our exhibits are accompanied by artists' openings where the artist will attend. You get to meet them, hear what they have to say about what they've done, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So please join us at the Gold Coast Art Center and uh, come and say hi. Thank you. Once a year, we have this phenomenal art show where we get to showcase the students' absolutely tremendous work. I'm Ellen Schiff. I'm the very proud school director of the Gold Coast Art Center. We have a very extensive after-school program, evening program, and weekend program for ages as young as three up to adult. And the program is meant to grow with the children so they can start young and progress every year. So very extensive and beautiful artwork. Students get to talk about their work with parents, with their friends, explain it. The children speak about their work, articulate what they like about it, articulate what they learned, and that's part of doing the art as well. What I love about this is the people that come here consider this their second home. We have a wonderful um, program that you can take all different kinds of classes, not just arts, we're visual and performing arts. We also have new classes, robotics, we have chess, we have dance. What do you like so much about dancing? Dancing makes me happy. Okay, and you were just in a competition. How did that make you feel? Happy. So what kind of dancing do you do? I take ballet, jazz, and lyrical, but I won first place for my jazz. Excellent, and what's your favorite kind of dance? I like all of them the same. All of them the same, that is awesome. I want to be a professional dancer. And how do you like the dance classes at the Arts Center? They're really fun, and I just enjoy dancing. I'm happy that my mom signed me up for dance team because I made all these new friends on the dance team. And you were recently in a competition Tell us about the competition and uh, and how you did. So the competition was really long, but it was worth it when I got high gold. You got high gold? Wow, that's awesome. So how did it make you feel when you won high gold? I was like really happy and I was jumping up and down. Let's talk about your uh, your coach, Miss Megan. Miss Megan, she's such a kind person. She's always polite. She's always willing to help you when you have a problem. One day I was having a lot of trouble um, with one of my steps in my dance, but Miss Megan just let me keep practicing them and she gave me tips on how I can do it better and then um, during the competition I did really well. I think we all will be less nervous in our parts and our teacher will have 
less anxiety. So out of all the things in dance, all the dance steps, uh, I understand there was an improv. What was that like? Well, I was really nervous because I've never done it before, but um, as we kept on going, I got more used to the stage and I did my best. It's really fun and I almost wouldn't have gone on the improv competition if it weren't for her because she was the one who made me go. I think the best part about being on a team is having them there for you to cheer you on and it just makes you feel confident. Your team just coming off a great competition and a big win. Tell us about it. Well, the girls have been working hard. We just did our two competitions. We have one more to go. This is our first season. We are a small team, but they all have a big bite. They're fantastic workers. Um, it's been long days at the competitions, but well worth it. Well, we have one more competition at the end of April, and then we'll, we will be holding auditions again to see where next year takes us. We've We'll be doing some conventions in the fall. Uh, one of our dancers won a scholarship to a convention and we hope to all follow her to that convention. And just developing our team and making our girls the best that they can be. when we have our student show. Uh, it's all ages, starting at three years, going up to adults, and you can see the range of art that is being displayed. And we have famous artists that come here, but let me tell you, this is one of the shows, one of my favorites. I'm so proud of our students and what the faculty does with them and pushes them to become better artists. And which art is uh, yours here? The one right behind me. This okay, time. and tell us a little bit about it. Um, it was supposed to be monochromatic, but when I was looking at it, I felt like it needed a pop of color and like yellow and purple just look right together to me, so I added a yellow t-shirt. Nice. And which one is your artwork? Okay, and tell us about it. Um, I did a monochromatic one before, a colored one, but I wanted to do a black and white one because I never tried that before. And since I like stars, I put stars in the background. I started coming here for art classes when I was seven, seven or eight, so like seven years, six years. I also did a monochromatic black and gray, except I made like a pale, like very desaturated blue sweater, and I wanted to have a kind of geometric background to go with, to go against the very like natural, organic shapes of like a human face. And yeah, and I wanted to add more color to the background and make it very bright against the gray. I would like to just be able to like make art and sell it. Like that's like the, the dream, I guess. Over the summer, the three of us worked um, as camp counselors, teaching and um, drawing and painting with like younger children. And I just, I think I enjoyed that a lot, so. And you were doing that here at the Art Center? Yes. I feel like over the the years like we've kind of grown to be a sort of family together like I've grown up with a lot of these people and they've seen my art like change and develop it's a lot more freeing than having to focus on studies all the time because you get to make art with some of your closest friends and I think that's really important we kind of support each other in that way and it's a nice environment to work in today my students are celebrating their very uh, long-awaited video for their stop-motion animation and their digital animations. Um, they've been working very hard this semester and just moving from paper-based drawings to digital drawings. Um, one of the most amazing things nowadays is that we have technology at the tip of our fingers. Um, iPads have totally revolutionized um, the way teachers um, are, are applying specific uh, learning techniques with drawing and I am just trying to take it to the next level and, and challenging them to basically move from paper-based drawings to digital drawings and what better way to do it than animation I love what I do this is what I was born to do uh, I actually took classes at the Art Center when I was seven I started taking
and cartooning classes here at the Art Center. I loved it here. This was my home, and I still love it to this day. And thankfully, now that I'm an adult, I'm able to give back to the community. It's really fun to come here and just draw and do whatever we want. It just feels like welcoming to me, and I feel like I can be myself here. I like to go to the Art Center because, like, I can bring out my creativity here, and mm -hmm. like, just it sparks my imagination, and I can and I can do like all sorts of animations. And what do you like about working with Mr. Modesto? Um, he's he's a really nice teacher. He lets us do what we want. He's like okay, like he's not so strict. Like he's easygoing, and he likes to help us like just like bring out like 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 our like true potential. I'm in awe of all the work I see displayed here today, and um, to think the artists are, I guess, as young as five, four, up to high school. The work is incredible. I can't tell what age child did what, because each item on display is really very creative, and the way this exhibit was put together, with all the, um, the interesting groupings, it's just a pleasure to see. It's just wonderful to be here, and it's really my pleasure to be a part of this community, and I'm very proud of all the young artists who have exhibited their work here today. It's become a destination, the Gold Coast Art Center Gallery. Just come and don't miss these exhibitions. They're wonderful, they're local, and it's a quick train ride from the city, and they're free. Regina Gill. I'm the founder and executive director of the Gold Coast Art Center. Um, we are standing in our art gallery as we speak, which is a, a multi-arts sculpture, paintings, graphics, photography. exhibit that we're looking at here and it's it's quite extraordinary it's a Chinese uh, American artists Chinese art in America and it's in direct response to the I would say the greater numbers of Chinese Americans and Chinese immigrants who have moved into this region. Uh, and yes, they are a community, but they're also part of a greater community, and that's great. And the reason I wanted to have Chinese artists in America is how living in this country has influenced them being around American culture. And Western artists have taken so much in the years from Chinese and Asian artists. It's a collaboration of understanding how we influence each other. And I feel that since um, Mao, things politically have changed so much, especially for the younger artists with globalization, that they have more freedom to express what they want, probably in America. I know I am in contact with many artists overseas, and they're still a bit cautious of how they're expressing themselves politically. But here, you don't have to do that. And I just love what they're doing with that freedom. In Green Neck, I should say it's the first time we can see so many wonderful art pieces in one American gallery. 
because usually of course we go to some other place we can see a lot but in Green Neck it's not that much so it's a very wonderful opportunity like a, the Gold Coast Art Center invites so many artists here, the American Chinese artists here. So we can see so many art pieces here. And even at the opening, we can meet the artists in person. In reviewing the art that's on the walls here, you are going to see um, almost like a history of art from traditional, classical uh, painting, watercolor, uh, oil painting, to almost to, out to etchings and printmaking. This particular exhibit is based on the changing demographics of Great Neck in our community. And many of my students are Asian, and I see that the community has really embraced the Gold Coast Art Center, and I wanted to honor their culture and share with the community what is Chinese culture. Let me tell you about opening night. We had all the artists present, it was, it was a joy to have them with us, but at the same time we had invited the Chinese Association uh, in Great Neck to sponsor um, a dance program of the various forms of, of dance, and it was all in conjunction with Chinese New Year. When Jude and Regina told me about this event, I think it's wonderful, the exhibition, because here it's not a Chinese community, but they have the Chinese culture part. So I said, since it's an art part, why not we add the music part? Because we have so many talented musicians around, they're from the different generations. So I just reach out to different teachers, to different organizations, and especially the Green Neck Chinese Association, they really help a lot to put all the musicians, kids, senior people, and everyone together. That day, the opening day, actually it's a festival in China as well, the La Ba Festival in China. So it's a kind of the opening of the Chinese New Year. So in that day we can celebrate here with the art and the music. So it's pretty precious, yeah. So right now I teach Chinese culture to American people. I really feel proud to show our art and the music and the language and everything to people who never know China. been artist for a long time, since I was very little. In the beginning, in a long time ago in China, the kids don't have toys. There's uh, not right now like uh, parents take kids study violin, study painting, you know, piano. And uh, China was very poor. Um, but somehow there's a um, very old traditional artist came to my uh, little county and he showed, used the brush drawing on the rice paper, made in the rice paper they have a very special technique, uh, special effect. When you put water and ink in there, they will melt by itself. They will go away by itself. It's sort of like a watercolor um, paper. So it makes me feel so like magic. I grew up in Cultural Revolution. The Chinese Cultural Revolution was launched by Mao Zedong, chairman of the Communist Party in 1966. The goal of the revolution was to remove any form of Western influence or Chinese traditions in favor of Mao teachings. During the revolution, Mao produced a book filled with his quotes and excerpts from his speeches. The book was to be carried by everyone in China and used as a tool for education and solution to problems. The Cultural Revolution ended in 1976 upon his death. My father was working for the government, head of a cultural department. During the Cultural Revolution, he got, uh, he got been punished. Um, that's why he uh, heard that I want to study painting. He got very scared. I have to run away from home to pass tests to go to school. Uh, during that time, is the, the tra transportation is very poor. So only one bus from one place to another place. Uh, when I take on the bus, no way you can get it, no, to take me back. So that's how I get to pursue my career all my life. I think that I made a good decision because that's something I really love. So I'm uh, very happy with my career being an artist. Yeah.
Uh, this piece of art, uh, the name called Muted View. The Muted View is, means there's no sound. Um, not, 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 because only, not, not only because of the black white, compared to color, they sort of like muted. You know, but also the forms. In this painting, especially in this, this painting, I use unknown kind of form, some very detailed, some very abstract. But I put them together, they, they doesn't really, uh, they're abstract. So I want people to put their imagination to this, uh, um, yeah, from this image, to enlarge their imagination, put their own thoughts own vision and to understand, to or extend this painting's meaning. Normally in Chinese tradition art, they use brush and then rice paper and then with the ink. So you can see my artwork is a ink on rice paper. So this very traditional kind of uh, material, but I'm use in right now. I'm used uh, in different way in the modern. Um, a modern uh, form to show that uh, traditional technique can be uh, modernized. I'm a, a feminist artist and also I do a lot of feminist art. And in this uh, ink painting I also try to put my um, thoughts in in the um, in the painting, use uh, the unknown kind of image. But you have, if you use my view, and I have a, a woman's body connected with this uh, landscape. Uh, 我找到了自己的绘画的发展方向快速的疯狂特别有力应该属于原生艺术的一类吧，呃，既有涂鸦的，呃，涂鸦方面的一个特点，然后呢，也有，也有杜布菲所说的那种原生艺术的特点。嗯，还primitive art and folk art. I love this. I love this art. From this art. I absorb nutri nutrients. Then uh, I found my I found my uh, style. Uh, 我这张作品的名字呢叫舍生似虎。呃，就像呃耶稣受难一样，这是一个故事，是一个关于佛陀的故事，是一个关于佛陀成佛之前的故事。然后他舍弃了自己的生命，然后挽救了八只老虎的生命。然后这个故事特别打动我。The name of the work is sacrifice lives to save tigers. Uh, this picture is come from Dunhuang Mural of China. Uh, like uh, Christ, he gave up his life to save people. This story is about Buddha. The Buddha gave his gave up his life to save tigers. The story uh, touched me deeply, so I drew it. 嗯，这张作品的名字呢叫《中国年》。
呃，是去年呢，去年过春节的时候，呃，我来到了纽约，呃，这是我第一次来美国，然后我看到了很多很多生活在纽约的中国人，然后他们聚在一起，呃，庆祝我们中国的传统的新年，然后我又一次被感动了，然后画了这张画。这个人，这个最大的人是我，哦，我自己。<笑>呃，蓝色的蓝色的都是小孩都是男孩因为当时舞狮子的时候需要力量嘛，然后都是男孩子。然后这个红色的，现在这么一看，好像都是女孩哈、哦。然后中间这个狗是去年是不是狗年呢？对，中间这个这是小狗，去年是。我觉得我当时画这张画的时候，我就感觉我是一个孩子。呃，我就想象我是一个孩子在画这张画的是那种状态，所以我的造型都是孩子的造型。40 years， 我不喜欢在上描摹很长的时间，我需要快速的，因为我用的都是丙烯颜料。对，我原来是美术学院油画系毕业，但是现在基本不用油画颜料，丙烯颜料跟中国的水墨很接近，能够被水调和，所以我更喜欢。肯定是现代艺术，应该说油画本身起源于西方，嗯。我们在上学的时候就接触到了很多的优秀的这种油画艺术，但是我们自己从事创作以来，其实也受到了中国的影响，因为我们本身具有中国的文化基因 DNA， 这是两个概念，一个是时间的概念，一个是空间的概念。中国的艺术其实一直也没有断，一直没有断，延伸到今天。我说中国艺术的时候，既指以前的，也指现在的，比如敦煌就是以前的。那我们现在我们就活着，我们是现在的。啊，这幅画我画的是一只年龄很大的老山羊。嗯，呃，学名应该是原羊，我估计你可能找不到词儿的，就老山羊就行。嗯，我喜欢画动物的形象。我坚从我毕业创作到现在，大概二十多年，我一直在坚持，几乎所有的画都是动物。呃，在我到纽约以后，我曾经去过布朗克斯住，布朗克斯动物园，也见到了类似的老山羊。其实它是一种大自然的艺术品，它有一些力量的感觉在里面。这个怎么说？其实通过这个羊的形象，它更像一个大自然的，比如说山脉，然后树枝、呃水流等等等等，它有一种这个。和怎么说呢？洪荒之力就浑然天成，跟我们人没有关系。另外，我当时受到了一个一个启发，是因为那个羊在用它长长的脚的那个脚尖儿，其实在搔痒。不不不，犄角，这个犄角的脚尖儿，它在挠痒，它的脚非常大，它甚至可以拿它挠后腿。哦。然后当时我觉得这个力量一个回转，我觉得这个这种回转的感觉非常好。<笑>对。而且我补充一下，而且呃，我画画的时候，我并不是照着照片或者照着它去写生，我有可能看完了之后记在脑子里，我可能回过了一段时间，这段时间可能需要沉淀发酵，那最后我们。面对画布的时候，其实只有我和画已经别的形象的其实在我脑子里了。我所有的画都是没有照片的。嗯，呃，我故意让它在里面有一些水的流淌。呃，这些偶然的现象，还有刚才我说我不借助照片，其实我是放弃了传统艺术中的那种所谓的形状的一样临摹。那这种概概念观念，其实都是受到了现代艺术的影响，嗯哼，抽象艺术的影响。这是三张系列作品中的第二张，爸爸妈妈和孩子，这是妈妈。我喜欢呃，波洛克、德库宁这些现代艺术家。I like 他，我喜欢他们的作品和风格。然后呃，我在画的时候也尽量希望像他们一样放松，然后忘却其实很多的知识。至于它是什么品种的老虎，已经不重要了啊、嗯。当时我坐飞机。飞越北冰洋来到纽约，应该是飞越了半个地球。在经过北冰洋的时候，我通过窗户看到外面的那个荒原，那个冰冰，还有那个呃山的那种水的流淌。怎么说呢？这个就是看到大自然吧。我觉得跟那个艺术中的画面呢很相似，跟很多画面很相似。其实，在我们身边就有，就存在着很多很多的大自然的影像。我只是把它赋赋予了一个老虎的形象而已。
，呃，就是他那种形式给我了一些启发。但是我回来以后，呃，也不是马上就画，我过了一段时间，其实也有黄颜色。我突然间想画三只老虎，爸爸妈妈和孩子。那么我第二张的时候就运用了这种刚才说到的那些印象。我觉得。这个，呃，就到纽约以后的这种时间，我发现就是可能我有了距离，呃，能更多的看到我们身上本身有的一些文化的基因。那有时候就是中国有句诗叫。只缘身在此山中。当你在中国的时候，你反而不明显。现在到了这里，纽约是一个平台，我可以看到全世界各地的优秀的现存的艺术。那我这里面有一种学习的时候，反观自己有一个可能文化的基因在里面。就像这次展览，其实我们选择的这几张，都是有水墨的味道。OK， 嗯，这也是我们学习的一个收获吧。Well, our doors are always open to come visit the Gold Coast Art Center Gallery. We're taking submissions all the time. Please contact me at the Art Center to submit your work if you're interested in exhibiting. We look forward to seeing everybody and welcoming everybody. Come and see the exhibit that's on the walls. If it's not this exhibit, I can promise you it'll be an exhibit worth visiting.